Hey everyone and welcome back to the BFA class review. Today we're going to be checking out the Rogue. Now I really enjoyed the Rogue and Legion even though Sub did spook me a little bit at times but uh, yeah pretty excited to check out the Rogue and once you're done with this video you should check out today's sponsor Icy Veins. They're the largest destination for World of Warcraft class guides and they have hired 26 writers for BFA. Their BFA guides they're all up right now and they're really useful and they will get you right up to speed and solve any gameplay mistakes or stuff like that super quick with all the new BFA changes. So thank you to them for sponsoring and let's get into the video. Okay, Outlaw, that's what we're starting with, the king of the RNG. Sometimes it was crazy fun, other times it was pull your hair out frustrating. Very much a spec that many loved and hated, so it's interesting, or it's going to be interesting to see how it's changed with the expansion. And we'll kick it off with the baseline changes. So first, Grapple Hook is now available baseline on a 60 second cooldown, with there being a talent that reduces that down to 30. So that's pretty great, and I think that's something that the rogues have really wanted throughout all of Legion, but let's get on to the core rotation stuff. So it's not mega different, but there have been changes. First, Saber Strike and Run Through, our old um, bread and butter uh, sort of generator and finisher, they've been renamed. Saber Strike is now back to being called Sinister Strike, and then Run Through is back to being called Dispatch. Now, they have slightly tweaked resource values as well, and uh, Sinister Strike does still have its effect where it can proc a pistol shot, but instead of that pistol shot being free, it now just costs 50% less energy and deals 100% more damage generating one combo point. So, you'll use the two of these to generate combo points. So overall, if your combo point generation is a little bit slower than you might have been used to, then you could be wondering, well, how much does this, uh, does this affect the Restless Blade's passive? Now, that's a passive that reduces the cooldown um, of a bunch of cooldowns when you spend combo points. Well, actually, it's not affected that much because it now decreases your cooldowns by one second per combo point, up from 0.5 seconds, but of course, you are generating, uh, you know, fewer combo points. But it still seems to be a buff. Now, one source of many combo points was our old artifact ability, called Red Blades which is entirely gone, no longer being a part of this spec at all. The upshot here is that Adrenaline Rush is pretty much your only big DPS cooldown. And then as for Roll the Bones, well, it's pretty much the same bar a few tweaks, so Ruthless Precision now gives 60% crit to in between the eyes, which means that your ranged finisher um, actually has priority when it's off cooldown, and that helps to vary up the spec a little bit during certain Roll the Bulls, uh, Bones situations. Now, I'd say the most significant change with this spec is what's happened to Blade Flurry. So previously, you just turned it on, you'd automatically cleave targets at the the expense of generating slightly less energy. It wasn't very interactive, but now it's quite different. It has two charges and a 24 second recharge, but it's a good bit more potent. So it'll be stronger for priority AOE and overall more of an interactive mechanic that's going to uh, require planning and skill to execute. So from a design perspective, I think that this, um, this really is a good change. Uh, you won't notice it that much in raids because you're typically not going to have long sustained AOE in that case, but you'll probably notice it in Mythic Plus. Past that though, things are much the same. So existing outlaw rogues are going to acclimatize pretty quickly. Okay, so that's it for the baseline changes, and let's actually just talk about what the gameplay results of all of that is. So it's pretty simple. Your Sinister Strike is what you use to build up combo points. Then from time to time, you'll proc a reduced cost pistol shot, which will also build up uh, combo points. Then you'll want to use Roll the Bones. This will give you um, random buffs. So basically, there's a pool of a few potential buffs. You normally get between one or three of them, but rarely you can get fortunate and have all six. Very rarely, though. So you'll want to maintain these buffs. Um, each one of them will vary your gameplay slightly. For an example, bringing between the eyes into rotation, perhaps increasing increasing your energy generation or reducing your uh, cooldowns. Now, the correct usage of this, as per usual, it will be simmed out, and really it's the core of the spec. Now, if AoE stuff happens, then you just want to flick on Blade Flurry, watch your numbers explode. Blade Flurry is a 12 second duration on a 24 second recharge with two charges, which means that if you pull it up, you can go for a constant 36 seconds of massive AoE damage, so if you use this well, you'll be performing really, really great. Now, your main cooldown is a Adrenaline Rush, it massively increases increases your energy regen, and it's best used in tandem with really good Roll the Bones buffs, which is something I'll kind of talk about later. And really, that pretty much is it. Of course, you're a rogue, right? You've got stealth, you've got a bunch of robust utility, you've got your grapple hook, which is now baseline. That's all pretty awesome. So let's just move on to the talents. 
Okay, so with talents, there's a fair few tweaks, but I don't feel that many of them are gameplay altering to the point of like really being groundbreaking until we maybe get a little bit later on. Now, one thing is that Loaded Dice is now a talent. Now, for context, Loaded Dice back in Legion was an artifact trait that would cause your adrenaline rush to guarantee your roll the bones, your next one, to generate at least two buffs. Now, this went a long way to removing some RNG-based frustrations with the spec, where you would feel like you did your big DPS cooldown and it would kind of get wasted. I'm glad this is back, to be honest, but it should, in my view, be a baseline part of the Adrenaline Rush ability and not a talent. Unfortunately, it's not performing that well right now, it's not a regular pick, which means that this mechanic does just feel downgraded from Legion. Next, it's also worth mentioning Prey in the Weak, so it would cause your combat stuns to increase the target's damage taken. Now, of course, what's cool here is the value of this has increased because of the new Roll the Bones buff, which means that Between the Eyes can be more widely used in combat. But of course, that only applies if the enemy is stunnable. Maybe that'll be nice in PvP or something. Um, now, if you don't like Roll of Bones gameplay, then Slice and Dice is still there. You can use that and it will give you an attack speed increase instead of a bunch of random buffs. It replaces Roll of Bones. Now, at first, it would appear to be nerfed um, against Legion, but you've got to remember that normal white damage is actually far higher in BFA, which is why Slice and Dice had to be rebalanced. Then, on the 100 tier, that's where you've got the most change, especially with the removal of Death from Above, in addition to Blade Rush, which is a really cool new ability. It's got a 20 yard range and it will send you flying towards the target, dealing damage to both the target and enemies around it. And if you use it while Blade Flurry is active, then its AoE component is even stronger and even better, it will then generate 25 energy over 5 seconds. Now you might see its 45 second cooldown and get a bit worried, but you've got to remember that its cooldown is reduced by your passive restless blades. Then finally, Killing Streak. It's still here. It's on this tier, but, uh, and you know, it still sends you around teleporting about the enemy stabbing them. But thankfully, it only lasts two seconds, which means that you're going to be spending less time not in control of your character. Now, as for the rest of the talents, um, there's nothing that really needs to be looked at because they mostly do the same and don't change up the gameplay that much. So let's just talk about the overall opinions and where this spec lands for me. Well, not having loaded dice kind of sucks. And the thing is that Look, it doesn't sim out well, so you're either going to be using Slice and Dice, which is fine, but maybe a bit plain, or you'll be using um, Alacrity, which itself is just a kind of dull haste buff that doesn't really feel that interactive, but does kind of come out on top right now. And um, look, Roll the Bones, it's the primary uh, mechanic of this spec, and the thing that saved it in Legion is now a talent that isn't performing well. So, to be honest, I'm utterly baffled that Blizzard have not baselined that um, effect. Then the loss of artifact ability, in this case, like, I'm sorry, it's a great pity. Unlike, say, the Havoc one or the Marksmanship one, uh, Curse of the Dreadblades was a really, really fun ability that gave you this massive surge of speed, and it played really well into the other mechanics of the spec. So not having it, for me, does remove a high point of the gameplay. So, I mean, so far, right, this might seem uh, really negative, but it is worth saying there's some really good things. So Blade Rush, it's a really entertaining ability. I'm glad it's there, and I really like the new Blade Flurry. Have that, um, having that be on a cooldown uh, means that it can be more powerful which means that more skilled players can use it better to pull ahead and it gives that part of the spec a higher skill cap which means it will be fun for longer but man the losses in my view um th those losses with uh, loaded dice and dread blades they mean that this does not carry over that well into bfa in some contexts like say raiding or the top end stuff because in most contexts i still enjoy this right so sinister strike pistol shot run through roll the bones they all make for an enjoyable set of core abilities and just using them is really satisfying they've got a look and feel that i think has been nailed and mechanically the flow of the buttons feels fantastic because of the pace of your combo point generation especially say getting your um, you know your pistol shot procs and doubly so if you're then talented into quick draw which causes your free uses of or your reduced cost uses of pistol shot to generate an extra combo point and then you know roll the bones for the most part it's very fun it's kind of exciting to see what procs you get and much like how wildfire infusion serves to vary the survival hunter rotation roll the bones varies the outlaw rotation I love that, but Loaded Dice acted as a crutch and it removed one of the potential, I'd say, great pain points of this spec that was out of the player's control. So what this means for me is that, yes, it's entertaining in most contexts, but it's not something that I would personally feel go or comfortable going hardcore on, um, even though I guess just casually doing dungeons, yeah, I enjoy doing that on this spec. So in general, it's pretty cool. You know, you're going from mob to mob, you're blade rushing, you're grappling hooking, uh, you're getting some sweet buffs, you're blasting through enemies. All that's really fun, I just have some lingering issues with how the spec has moved into BFA, but they very much are things that could be fixed. 
Okay, next it's time for Sub Rogue, and I guess, you know, moving on from Outlaw to Sub, we'll just think of some happy thoughts, because I know Outlaw didn't really go as well as I would have uh, liked. Now, Sub, for me, um, I thought it was pretty tricky. I loved it. found it very enjoyable on a target dummy, but I found that some of its high points were a little bit hard to pull off um, when you're actually in a fight. So, that's kind of interesting. Now, of course, back in Legion, I was doing it without macro, so I was probably making life harder for myself. But still, it was this very interesting spec to me, so I was definitely keen to see what's changed. <laughs> So, what has changed with the core of Subtlety? Really, not a great deal. It has a bit of a slower feeling now, which to me is not a major downside. I still have found it to be quite engaging. Uh, most of the core buttons do the same thing, but Shadow Dance lasts for a second longer. So, so far, it's so similar, but it's maybe a little bit slower because of the loss of some artifact traits. Now, I've been okay with that. The new pace for me is still pretty involved. And um, one area of difference is Shadow Blades, which is your main cooldown. So, it now causes combo point generators to deal 50% um, extra damage a shadow which is quite different to how it used to work which is where it would affect um, auto attacks now the largest realistic change is death from above has been removed now this ability had significant combo point and energy requirements and that ended up making it be quite hard to use it added a pretty high skill cap but it did of course reward really skilled players who were able to use it right but that just wasn't the case for many people so while it was a really good talent and um, it was a pretty difficult play style to be default for many so with death from above and um, being removed it has been replaced with a new finisher that is a regular attack with a regular animation that's a lot shorter, which makes it kind of easier to use. And um, Death From Above's replacement also seems to be less dominant with the balancing currently, which makes it feel like there'll be a bit more choice in that talent here. But that's, you know, past that, things, they really aren't too different. So let's just go and talk about the core gameplay. <laughs> Alright, so you're generating combo points with Backstab, which you can use in front of the enemy, uh, but you don't really want to, but don't think too hard about that. Um, now, once you've generated combo points, you want to, of course, use them, and you've got two finishers. The main one that you want to always have is Nightblade. It's damage over time that you want to maintain the target, doubly so, because it increases the damage that that target takes from you. Uh, so what do you do with your extra combo points? Well, simply just dump them into Eviscerate. So that's that. Then for AoE, you've got Shuriken Storm, which damages enemies and generates combo points for every enemy that Shurik or uh, Shuriken Storm hits, and uh, it deals extra damage if used from stealth. Uh, then for every target hit by Shuriken Storm, the damage of your next Eviscerate is increased, which gives you this pretty nice rhythm in AoE scenarios, but that's not it. Oh no. The Shadow Dance is the heart of this spec. Now, Shadow Dance is an ability that, when used, will allow you to use abilities as if you're in stealth, giving you basically five seconds of stealth that cannot be broken by taking damage or casting things. Why is this good? Well, before I cover that, I need to talk about Symbols of Death. It's a 30 second cooldown ability that generates 40 energy and increases damage done by 15% for 10 seconds. Now, why is all this important? Well, You've got a stealth-only ability called Shadow Strike. It generates two combo points at the cost of 40 energy, and it does heavy damage. So, um, it does a bunch of damage, generates a large number of combo points. If we're going to tie all of this stuff together, how do you actually use the Shadow Dance mechanic? Well, you first want to bleed away some combo points, ideally getting down to between one and three. You then want to have energy such that you can use Symbols of Death, and then use Shadow Dance. So, you'll have a 15% damage buff from Symbols, you'll be in your Shadow Dance, where you'll be able to use your most powerful generator, Shadow Strike. So you're getting as much Shadow Strikes in as you can, and you're burning off resources with Eviscerate, and you ideally want to Shadow Strike and um, once or twice, then Eviscerate, then Shadow Strike again, and that'll be it. Really, it all happens quite fast, but you do get used to it after a while. Now, you've got two charges of Shadow Dance on a one-minute recharge, but that cooldown or that recharge is reduced by 1.5 seconds for every combo point that you spent. Now, the combo point generation is also kind of strange for these guys, because in addition to your abilities, your auto attacks have a chance to generate both combo points and energy. Then, um, Relentless Strikes, of course, is a passive that guarantees an energy refund of six for every combo point that is spent on a finisher, which further makes the pace of this one quite interesting. Thing. And then finally, Shadow Blades is your big cooldown, and it causes your combo point generators to generate an additional combo point and generate 50% extra damage um, as Shadow for 20 seconds, which makes it pretty damn powerful. We've also got amazing situational abilities, so we can use Shadow Step to just appear behind an enemy, which is awesome, and then we can use Shadow Strike to teleport behind enemies um, as an opener, because it can only be used in that way from hard stealth. So um, that's really the gameplay. You're weaving in and out of Shadow Dance, you're making as much use of that mechanic as is possible, so with that covered, let's talk about the talents. 
Okay, so with Sub, we do see a few tweaks to the talents. Um, the first row has a buffed Weapon Master, which is simply a 15% chance for your generators to hit the target twice. And then we've got a new talent, which is called Find Weakness. Now, this one causes Shadow Strike and Cheap Shot to apply a debuff and that causes your attacks to bypass 40% of the enemy's armor for 10 seconds. Then Gloom Blade still exists, but right now it's not very strong. Uh, Find Weakness, basically it adds an other mechanic for you to play around, and technically it does come out ahead, but it's quite hard to use, um, like it's basically it's hard to execute in comparison to the very simple Weapon Master, so most people probably go for Weapon Master. Then our next major change is on the 45 row, which now has Marked for Death. Of course, that instantly generates five combo points, and it will have its cooldown reset if the target dies. And really, I think it's great. I think this is a really fun talent to use with the pace of the spec. Plus, it can be used to sort of snipe uh, dying targets for more combo point generation. And now the talents are very similar past that with um, some new utility in the form of uh, Shot in the Dark and Night Terrors. We then do see some tweaks to the numbers of Alacrity, making it ramp up faster, but be a smaller overall haste buff. Um, and then Dark Shadow, which um, is 5% less effective, but still does serve to or exist to, um, you know, highlight the importance of Shadow Dance by giving it a damage buff. And then the 100 tier, of course, Death from Above is gone. It's been removed from Legion. It's now a PvP talent. Um, and then, of course, Mark for Death was removed, brought back to the 45 tier, which gives us room for two new talents. So the first one is Shuriken Tornado. It's a talent on a 60 second cooldown that automatically throws out four Shuriken Storms over the next four seconds. Now, it's very situational. It probably won't be widely uh, used. And then our second new talent is Secret techniques. So this is a finisher that creates a shadow clone of yourself and both you and the clones will attack enemies near the target dealing um, da normal damage to the primary enemy and then reduce damage to the enemies around your primary enemy. Now it's currently quite competitive with the other um, talent um, on this tier, uh, Master of Shadows, which grants you energy over time and um, when you stealth. Now, so far, this ability doesn't seem too dissimilar from Death from Above in terms of its role of the rotation, but it does not have as long of, um, of an animation, it doesn't move your character about the place. Secret Technique also does have a built-in cooldown reduction mechanic, which is based on your combo points spent, so while, yup, it's got a 45 second cooldown, your usage of it will not be dissimilar to Death from Above. Alright, so let's cover some of the other talents that they've not changed, but I think they're worth knowing about for the context of this video. So, I really like using Shadow Focus, which reduces enemy costs while stealthed, and uh, when that's combined with Master of Shadows, it gives you quite a lot of leeway with the spec, and it smooths out the gameplay, which to me just makes it a bit more comfortable, but I'll admit that's because I'm not super comfortable using a uh, uh, secret technique perfectly right now. So there you go, that's talents, time to cover my overall thoughts. So I think this has worked out pretty well for the um, Sub Rogue, in my view. Uh, their core gameplay with Shadow Dance, that is still intact. Uh, thank God Blizzard didn't put symbols of death in the GCD or something. Uh, Shadow Dance still manages to be a mechanic that I enjoy using a lot. Uh, the one criticism, and this could be beta lag or something, but it's that my action bar does not switch over to the stealth one instantly upon Shadow Dancing. There's just enough of a delay that you could end up backstabbing uh, just before Shadow Dance like, swaps over your bar. Uh, it's a little bit strange, it can be solved, by by just binding Shadow Strike onto a secondary bar, but it's a bit odd. Uh, still though, in terms of the talents, I do like what Blizzard have done. I think Death From Above, like it was cool, you know, you jump up in the air, you leap down, but you've all seen the compilations of rogues getting themselves killed with Death From Above. It took a long time as an animation, so as much as it was cool, I'm kind of glad it's a PvP talent and we've got something that's a little bit less disruptive in its place. But overall, the talents, I think there's you know, there's good stuff there. Um, I'm glad Mark for Death is now on the 45 tier because I really like what it does with the pace of the spec, even though right now it's probably not something that you will go with. Um, but yeah, that really is it for the talents. Overall, I would say I enjoy this quite a lot. It feels a little bit slower to how it will have done on live. Part of that's because of, you know, losing your artifact. Um, a part of that is because of um, just some, you know, little changes here and there and the fact we've got less gear. Um, but you know what? It's a really engaging spec. I think it's really fun to do well in. And the gameplay pace that happens because of Shadow Dance is something that I really, really enjoy using. It's a pretty unique mechanic. It sets this spec apart from the other ones. So yeah, overall, I'd say uh, sub actually does get a thumbs up from me.
So with sub done, let's talk about assassination. And it was relatively simple. It was slower than the other specs and it was quite predictable, which means that while it may not have been the most thrilling thing, I found it quite comfortable and enjoyable to use on fights. Plus some of the more advanced gameplay involving spreading out your um, Envenom usage and uh, you know, using all of your stuff right, essentially, it did add enough depth to the spec for it to be engaging to me. So um, yeah, let's just go and take a look with how things have progressed to the baseline of the spec in Battle for Azeroth. So right off the bat, the most noticeable thing, it's got to be the loss of artifact weapon. So the artifact ability, Kingsbane, was one of the more interesting artifact abilities in the game. It was really cool. So um, it was just one of those ones that, you know, it could be used normally, but if you planned right, it would be really powerful. And what this meant is that every 45 seconds, Kingsbane provided a really fun bit of gameplay. So with that being removed, in my view, the flow of this spec is significantly damaged. It lacks that um, medium term interaction that would prevent it from being monotonous. Uh, losing artifact also does remove a few passives that sped up the spec, so assassination does feel a bit slower. Now, ideally, Azerite stuff would polish that up, but it's kind of hard to rely on that at uh, this stage. Now, moving on to the topic of stats, we do have a really good change. So the tick rate of bleeds now scales with haste. This means that at higher haste, the damage per tick stays the same, the duration of your dot stays the same, simply there will be more ticks in that duration. And that makes haste way more valuable. It also interacts with any effects that as an example, trigger on ticks of a dot. They will trigger more often. So it's hard to overstate how good of a change this is for rogues and really any damage over time focused class in the game, like say the feral druids as well. So that's a really, really great change and that I'm super glad Blizzard made. But really past that, the core of the spec is the same, but it's a little bit slower and it's lacking a gameplay defining cooldown. So let's just cover what the base gameplay from all of this is. Okay, time for the baseline gameplay. Uh, first up, Mutilate is our main combo point generator. It will generate two combo points at the cost of 50 energy. Then our next generator is a bleed called Garrote. So these will generate your combo points and those combo points will go into two spenders. You've got Rupture, which is a very powerful dot, and then Envenom, which damages the enemy and increases your poison application rate. What does that mean? Well, your weapons are coated in a poison, it's a buff that you give yourself, and that gives your auto att attacks a chance to apply a poison to the enemy. So, in Venom's increased poison application effect lasts for six seconds if used at five combo points, so ideally you want to spread out your Envenom usage to get maximum uptime of that effect. And really the core of this spec is about maintaining your bleeds on the target, spreading out um, your Envenom usages so that it's, you know, you're getting the most use out of it. And what's really cool about this though is a passive called Venomous Wounds. It's awesome. Now it generates seven energy every time Garrote or Rupture and Bleed ticks do damage to a poison target. Now this benefits a lot from the new haste change, which will cause increased haste to trigger the effect more often, which means you get more energy. Now this feels especially nice when you are in a two or three target situation where you're splitting bleeds and poisons around the place. And this is aided in AOE by Fan of Knives. That's our combo point generator for AOE that has the nice side effect of also being able to apply your poisons. Now the only wild card here is your combo point generation. So one of our passives makes it such that our crits can generate an extra combo point. Now, mutilate is a two-handed attack with like both of your hands. Um, so it can actually generate up to four combo points in total if your main hand and offhand both crit. Now this can really up the pace of this spec if you get the crits, but it also can lead to some wasted resources if you do not take it into account. Because of this, finishers are optimally used at like four to five combo points or um, five to six if you've talented into deeper stratagem. Now, uh, then our main cooldown is Vendetta, which causes you to deal 30% increased damage to the target for 20 seconds and also gain 60 energy over three seconds and be able to see the target through stealth and invis. So um, pretty cool, but not as cool as Kingsbane, um, which I'm not going to let you forget about Blizzard. Uh, but with that covered, let's hop over to the talents. So broadly, the talent changes here are pretty good. We see a bunch of lesser used talents being removed and that gives us more room for interesting options. So Anticipation, Death from Above, Hemorrhage, Shadow Focus, and Alacrity are all gone. So let's talk about what this removal has actually opened up room for. Now our first new talent is Blindside. This is on the 15 tier and this is going to be super familiar to pre-Legion rogues because it's the return of Dispatch and um, just under a different name. Now it is an Execute that costs 30 energy and can be used on enemies with 
with um, less than 30% health, but Mutilate has a 25% chance to proc a free use of it. This adds a simple extra thing to react to with the spec, and it does help to up the flow of the spec a good bit as well, which I think is quite nice. Then moving on to the next tier, Shadow Focus has been removed in favor of Master Assassin, which will cause your crit chance to be 50% higher for the three seconds after breaking stealth. So big burst damage, but currently Subterfuge is performing a bit better because it allows you to use your abilities as if you were in stealth for three seconds after breaking stealth, and that gives Garot a 100% increased damage and no cooldown, which means you can multi-dot with Garot, which is really big over time. Uh, next, we see uh, Mark for Death is added to the 45 tier, just like it was with the sub. Uh, overall, it's a pretty good move in my opinion. And then for the rest of the spec, honestly, it's pretty similar until we get to the 100 tier where we see Poison Bomb. That's an artifact trait that's basically been added and it causes your Envenom and your Rupture to have a 4% chance per combo point to smash a vial that does um, AoE damage to enemies. Then Hidden Blades causes you to get a stacking buff every two seconds that increases the damage of your next fan of knives by 20% up to 20 times. It's pretty similar to one of the Legion legendaries and it's going to work out fantastically on fights where you've got bursts of AoE but not long form sustained AoE. Then finally Crimson Tempest is back and it is an AoE finisher that applies bleeds to the target. However, sadly, I guess it would be insane if it did, but those bleeds do not trigger Venomous Wounds energy regeneration. So there you go. That's the main changes. Uh, there are some other important talents though that I would like you to know about. So in the 90 tier, we've got two pretty cool ones that interact with our dots. There's Toxic Blade and Exanduate, something like that. Uh, Toxic Blade has a 25 second cooldown and it increases nature damage done against the target. So it makes your poisons a bit better. And then um, Exanduate or whatever um, is a really interesting cooldown in that on a 45 second cooldown, it causes your bleeds to bleed out 100% faster. And that's awesome because it means double the tick rate in half the duration. Now you might be wondering why that's really cool and it's simple, it means that well, you know, it's double the tick rate, it's 100% faster, and that means a surge of energy due to Venomous Wounds. Currently, it's not the go-to pick, but I think it's a really interesting feeling mechanic. So, there you go, that's it for the Assassination Talents, let's move on to the thoughts. So overall, on a basic level, I still, like, I still do enjoy Assassination quite a lot. It's got a healthy mix between straight up damage and then damage over time things. You feel very uh, in control. There's really not much in the way of RNG that's going to mess you up. And, um, you know, just you're kind of free to multi-dot your targets, get your venomous wounds, th you know, think about spreading out your envenoms correctly. And that's great. Like, I really, really do enjoy the venomous wounds um, mechanic, how that works. I think it feels really good. And, um, you know, once you get this in a cleave fight, it's just a treat. Then Envenom is excellent. It requires slightly slightly nuanced usage, especially if you're getting lucky with your combo point generation from your crits. Um, so that's great. And then as for the times, we've got the Toxic Blade, we've got the um, Exanduate, whatever, um, especially with the ladder there. Sur the surge of energy that it gives you just feels great. So that's all cool, but I'm still I'm sad about Kingsbane. It was such a cool ability. It was one of my favorite artifact abilities, and not having it included here is a great pity for me. So overall, it's not too different. There are a few new toys. There are some changes um, that have been made that I think are good, but I do think that it is a little bit of a downgrade over Legion. So that's kind of unfortunate. So there you go, that's my opinions on the Battle for Azeroth changes. Honestly, kind of middling. I think there's positive things, but some are a little bit unfortunate. That said, the core of each spec is intact, so the reasons why I would have picked them up, they have not changed. It's more the Blizzard have just removed a few Legion tweaks and abilities that I personally really enjoyed. Does this mean the rogues are not fun? No, no, they still are fun. We've just lost some things um, that in my view we didn't really need to lose. I think Kingsbane, uh, I think that could have been a talent. I think Loaded Dice could have been baseline. There's just a few little things like that that... Uh, I really wish um, they handled differently moving forward. Of course, there's the opportunity for Azerite to fix that up, but right now, um, there's one or two promising sort of Azerite things, but we don't really know enough about that system because right now, we only have Aldir. We don't have the raid after, and it's kind of hard to see where Blizzard are going to go with that system over time. So there you go. That is my thoughts with the Rogue. A massive thank you to today's sponsor, Icy Veins. All of their class guides, they are good to go for Battle for Azeroth. You can check them out in the description below. They are awesome. The site is nice and fast, quick to navigate. The info is great and they hired 26 writers. So uh, they really did put a lot of work into it. So you can check that out down there. Thank you very much for watching this video. And with that said, I will see you next time.